Praise the Lord. Somebody there has said, if you are expecting the power of God, deliverance, salvation, healing, miracle, total freedom. If that is your expectation tonight, I said, praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we well, thank you at this time. How great you are. How wonderful you are. How powerful you are. And we come tonight with great expectation. Knowing that every request we bring before you tonight, you will answer every prayer. We pray, Lord, you prepare the hearts of those who are here. Prepare them for the book of life. That, Lord, there will be no one whose name will be missing out of the book of life in Jesus' name. Give us the wonder of salvation. The wonder of eternal life. The wonder of the joy of the Lord which is our strength. Grant us the joy of healing, of deliverance, of miracles. Here and everywhere we are connected in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life tonight. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we are looking at the story. You might be familiar with the story. You may not be familiar with the story. But look at the conclusion of that story. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, the conclusion of the story we're looking at tonight, Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, But Jesus beheld them, and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. The Lord tells us there are many things you can look at in your life, many things you can look at all around you that with men will be impossible concerning living victoriously, living righteously, living above the people around you and living a straightforward life, a saved life, a righteous life, you may say, how can that be done? That's why Jesus said, with men, in the power of man, in the authority of man, in the ability of man, led to himself, with men, all men, high, low, civilized, educated, with men, in every nation, in any nation, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. As you come tonight, I want you to have faith and confidence in those words of the Lord Jesus Christ that even though in your life, even though in your own consciousness, even though in all the details of your life, this you have found impossible. What you have found impossible all through your life, tonight, they are possible with God. I want to think about some people that come to crusade like this, and they do, not, they do not think about their personal lives. They think about all other people. They say, I'm not blind. I'm not lame. I'm not sick. They say, I'm even a Christian. And yet they do not look at their lives. The Lord is calling you. And the Lord is telling you, 
look at what you have found impossible in your life you wanted to live this way you couldn't do it you wanted to have the strength the mind the power to live a life that is irresistible you could not you wanted to do something something that people will know that in this life you became special and unique but you could not the lord is coming to you tonight with his word and he's saying with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible possibilities tonight yeah. healing tonight yeah. life eternal tonight yeah. abundant life tonight and the glory of god to shine upon your life tonight what you had found impossible since you were born all through your lives with all the education you have with all the provision you have and with all the things you had thought will be done and yet you found them impossible identify them name them look at them think and look inward personalize the words of christ that that thing you have found impossible think about it think about it don't just be blank that thing you find impossible in your life tonight is the night of possibility tonight is the night of heaven's performance in your life in jesus name tonight is that night as god will take you from where you are lift you up turn your life around possibilities are coming your way tonight in jesus name it says but jesus beheld them he looked at them and his eyes penetrated into their hearts and he said unto them all one by one and collectively with men and with that man with that woman with that individual this a particular thing this is impossible but what god how many things are possible in your life how many things are possible in your family how many things are possible in your character behavior and lifestyle how many things are possible but with god all things are possible it's a creator it can recreate us again it's our maker it can remake us again it's the one that formed man and gave life and breath unto man it can reform man it will make us again tonight transform our lives tonight change our lives tonight everything will become possible when christ enters into you when the lord himself has contact with you and he turns your life around that thing you have been saying i couldn't do that i couldn't go that way i couldn't make that possible possibilities will come tonight my message to you tonight all things possible by faith in the savior all things possible by faith in the savior i'm dividing the message to three parts and these divisions come from the story from the whole story number one the good men who are not good enough number one the good men who are not good enough the righteous people who are not righteous enough the kind people who are not kind enough and the acceptable people 
who are not acceptable in all. We cannot argue that somebody in particular is not good because there are many good people on earth. And before me today, there are many good people. The challenge is they're good, but they're not good enough. Number one, the good men who are not good enough. Number two, in the story we're looking at today, you'll find our God, our maker, who is more than enough. Our God, our maker, our creator, who is more than enough. That whatever we need him to do in our lives is more than enough. Can he save? Is more than enough. Can he heal? Is more than enough. Can he deliver? Is more than enough. Can he set you free? Is more than enough. Can he answer your prayer? Is more than enough. Can he destroy the works of the devil in your life? He is more than enough. Our God, our maker, who is more than enough. Number three is gracious mercy that stretches beyond enough. As you come to the Lord today, and you depend on the love of God, the compassion of God, the mercy of God, there is mercy, there is love that stretches beyond where you are and we have is gracious mercy that stretches more than enough. Let's look at the story now. The story is Matthew chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 16 now. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? That man came to Jesus and was looking at Jesus as good master because he thought of himself as a good man, good man, good master, comparing himself with the Lord. Good man, good master. And as he came with the concept and with the mind that I'm a good man and I come to the good master. There are people that come today, you listen to the word you are hearing. You think, well, when I think about it, I'm good, a good man, coming to the good master. And you think the connection is straightforward. Good man connected with the good master. Good woman connected with the good master. And good person connected with the good master. Good master, what good thing? Good master, good man, good thing shall I do that I may inherit, I may have eternal life. Look at verse 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good comparing me with yourself you think of me as a man and you think of yourself as a man and in the comparison the man and the master you call me good why call me good there is none good but one you yourself calling me good master and you pretend to be a good man there is none good but one that he is God but to answer your question if thou wilt enter into life because the man wanted to know what shall I do that I will enter into life life eternal you come to this world you are spending limited time on earth. You are not going to be here forever and ever. And so you must be concerned and you must ask the question, 
What will I do? How do I live? What do I believe? What experience should I have that I will enter into life eternal when I'm gone from here? And so Jesus said, and Jesus answered, and Jesus declared unto him to answer his question. If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Jesus started from there to make the man think through. How good am I? Am I good enough? Am I righteous enough? Am I acceptable the way I am so as to get to heaven? The Lord is talking to you. How good are you? How acceptable are you? How ready are you to live here and go to life eternal and be with God forever and ever? Okay, keep the commandments. Look at verse 18. He said unto him, which commandment was now ready to calculate one by one by one. Which commandment should I keep? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no mother. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you noticed what Jesus was telling him? He says, No, not 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 we call that negative now as you think about bringing electricity electric light there is the negative there is the positive if you only have not 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 negative light will not come life will not come if all you can say I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do that. All that is in the not. It's negative. You must bring the positive, connect the negative and the positive before light will come, before life will come, before the power will come. And so Jesus said, let's start from the negative. And maybe in your life, you can say, I don't do that. I don't commit that. I don't drink that. I don't smoke that. All that is not, 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 not. I don't steal. That's still not. I don't bear false witness. That's still not. Now, in verse 19, in verse 19, honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Look at verse 20. It says, The young man saith unto him, The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? You must be asking questions. You cannot go through life and just assume, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to have eternal life. I'm going to be with Jesus over there. I'm going to see God. I'm going to see the angels. You must be asking questions. He said, all these things have I done now. It's very difficult for you to mark your own paper in an examination. You go to do the exam, and this is the exam that is a final, that is going to throw you back into the world as a worker, as a person that wants to help society. That exam, you cannot do it and then give yourself first class. You cannot do that exam and mark your paper and say, I have made it. 
another person has to mark your paper and Christ has to mark your paper and what you have said I'm doing that I don't do this I don't do this I don't do this and so Christ is now going to mark his paper I pray when Christ marks your paper after tonight you will pass that exam remember what Jesus said final scene in verse 19 he said in that verse 19 and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and the man said I have done all that come back to verse 20 now the man was good but not good enough you are good but you are not good enough you are standing but you are not standing perfect enough you have tried to obey the commandments of the lord but you've not done it perfectly love your neighbor as yourself and the man said all these things have i cared for my youth up have you really your neighbor is poor what have you done your neighbor is suffering what have you done your neighbor is handicapped what have you done your neighbor is uh, has predicament what have you done he says all this have i done from my youth up you cannot mark your exam paper by yourself let's see now verse 21 in verse 21 jesus said unto him if thou wilt be perfect go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor you said you've done all this you love your neighbor as yourself look at the poor people there they're your neighbors go sell what you have and give to the poor why did he say that if you were sick you gather all your money all your income and spend on yourself to get well look at your neighbor look at the poor look at the sick if you loved the sick as yourself what you would have done for yourself gather all your money and give him complete health and care that's what you'll do did you say you love yourself and you have uh, passed all the exam and all this you have done from your youth all right look at daddy and look at mommy and look at the way they're suffering if you were suffering like that you'll gather your money together you'll sell what you have you'll say once there is life there is hope and i don't want to die in this condition you'll gather everything together you spend on yourself now what you would have done for yourself go and do for daddy and mommy if you had a challenge that you were incarcerated imprisoned and you know that your money can help and bring you out you will spend every cent every pound every dollar every every amount you have and you will get yourself out look at that person he has been accused wrongly and he is incarcerated you say you love your neighbor as yourself all right what you would have done for yourself if you were in that condition gather everything together and go and help them you know when christ marched his paper he discovered he is not good enough he thought he was a good man you thought you were a good man without christ you are a good man without conversion you are a good man without the grace of god coming into your life you are a good man 
And without the love of God, not the love of man, the love of God entering your heart, motivating you, driving you, making you to love everyone as Christ would have loved them. You thought you were good, but you are not good enough. And so, and thou shall have celebrity you have, give to the poor, help the poor, lift up the poor, take care of the poor all around you, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and then after that, come and follow me. Look at verse 22 there. But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful. He couldn't do that. Look at this man running to Christ. What good thing will I do that I want to enter eternal life? I want to do everything I can do. I want to get to heaven. I want to have eternal life. Tell me, whatever you tell me, I am ready. He thought he was ready. He wasn't ready enough. He thought he was good. He wasn't good enough. We're told he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. He couldn't follow Christ. That's what hinders people today. They do not look at Christ who can change their lives, who can deliver them, who can set them free. They do not look at Christ who can give them the grace and the mercy and the love and the compassion to do everything they ought to do. They do not look at Christ and take him as Savior and take him as their shepherd that whatever they give to the poor, Christ is able to give them back everything. Good men who are not good enough. That's how we are. My brother, my sister, my friend over there, we think we're good, but we're not good enough. It's only when we come to Christ and we put our faith in Christ. That thing that is lacking in our goodness, the Lord will supply. Even tonight, He will do it in Jesus' name. Let me show you one verse of scripture in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 20. Good, but not good enough. Deep, but not deep enough. Helpful, but not helpful enough. Righteous, but not righteous enough. Look at that in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 20. For the bed is narrower than a man, than that a man can stretch himself on it. All the bed spiritually that any man can make shorter than that a man will stretch himself on it. And the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it, all the good works, all our righteousnesses, all our devotion, all our religiosity, all our doing this and doing that. As the Lord looks at everything, He looks at it like a bed that is shorter, that will take your height or your length. He looks at it as the covering clothes that is narrower than a man can wrap himself in. Actually, the Lord looks at everyone as unqualified for life eternal. And those who say, I'm good, I'm righteous, they are not very thoughtful and they are not clear to themselves. In James, Chapter 2, reading from verse 10, James chapter 2, we're looking at verse 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, yet offend in one point, he keeps the whole law and yet he offends in one point. He is guilty of all. 
they arrested one man over there the other day and then as they arrested him they say you stole he said yes but you know i don't drink i don't smoke i don't commit adultery i don't fight all i've done i stole he will not be set free because he has kept the whole law. He offended only on one point. A man is confronted by another man. Hey, come on here. My wife confessed to me that you committed adultery with her. Be gentle on me. That's the only thing he has done he said but you know i'm this i'm this i'm this all the other points he cleared only one case of adultery in his life he's still guilty the man is not going to say okay i'm happy with you the only thing you've done is that you have committed adultery with the wife no he's still guilty of all as you look at your life if you're going to depend on i am good i am righteous i am this i am that you're not going to pass the exam that will get you to heaven you need christ your savior you need christ your substitute you need christ who can supply what is missing in your life so point number one and that's addressing you and talking to you the good men who are not good enough maybe you are good but you are not good enough maybe you are righteous but you are not righteous enough maybe you think you are right but you are not right enough but now the lord will turn everything around in your life i lost my crowd that thing that is missing your life it will supply when you turn around when you repent and you give your life to the lord jesus christ and he says i know you are not good enough you are not ready for heaven you are not ready for eternal life but i will change your life i will transform your life if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things are become new it'll make you a new it'll give you a new birth a new change transformation in your life in jesus name let's look at number two now number two is our god our maker who is more than enough our maker who is more than enough he can save it can set you free it can break every yoke in your life and that thing you are not able to do by yourself in human strength the almighty god is able to do it for you you know your private life you know your secret life and you know the deficiencies in your secret life that if god what you come today and say everything you have done will qualify you for heaven as he looks at you he sees the dead he sees the sin he sees the depravity he sees the evil he sees the adamic nature adamic life in your profession but by grace as you come to the lord and you say nothing in my hands i bring simply to the cross i cling jesus savior deliverer i come on the basis of your substitutionary sacrifice and suffering for me that is how salvation will come and because christ the savior had supplied what you don't have 
then heaven will be sure for you heaven will be sure for me i said heaven will be sure for me number two our god our maker who is more than enough look at matthew chapter 19 reading from verse 25 when his disciples heard it they were exceedingly amazed they were surprised seeing who then can be saved if that good man cannot be saved and he went away sorrowful not having eternal life who then can be saved if a man that is naturally good and kind-hearted a man that doesn't make any trouble with anybody a man that is gentle with everyone a man that is not violent a man does not he does not murder and he does not kill he does not commit adultery he does not bear false witness if such a man is not good enough who then can be saved that's why Jesus now answered and said in verse 26, in verse 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. With men, the priest cannot save even a good man. With men this is impossible. The church man, the religious father, the religious founder, he cannot save anyone with men. This is impossible. The people that sing your praises and the people that say is the greatest man in town, is the best man in town, is this, and they are drumming and drumming for you and mentioning your name, they cannot save you with men. With all those praise singers, with men, this is impossible. And with yourself blowing your own trumpet, I am, I do, I went, I cared, I raised, I did that. With you blowing your own trumpet, you cannot save yourself. With men, this is impossible. But praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. But with God, all things are possible. He can save you tonight. He will save you tonight. He will turn your life around tonight. Once you are not depending on your good works. You are not depending on your own righteousness. You are not depending on, I am this, I am that. You are not depending on your religion. You are saying, I know, with me, with men, with priests, with prophets, with whoever, with religious founder, this is impossible, but not with God, because with God, with God, with God, all things are possible. You do it in your life. It can save the vilest of sinners. It can save the hypocrite that think is good and yet is not good enough. It can save the religious. It can save anyone. He knows our secret. He knows our heart. He knows our thoughts. He knows all our pretenses. And he knows all those things who are put him forth are saved. Look at me, look at me. They cannot save. But with God, all things are possible. Salvation is yours tonight. As you turn away from your own righteousness, and you turn away from your own goody goody, what you have done or what you are doing, we have a God, a maker. We have a creator and a recreator who can make all things possible because he is more than enough look at hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 wherefore he is able 
wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost the people who cannot save themselves and the people the priest or pastor prophet cannot save the people that religion cannot save the people that traditions of men cannot save the people that even civilization cannot save god the creator christ our savior redeemer is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him that come you must come and you come to God who can save the God who is more than enough the God who is able you come to him and all the deficiencies and all the impossibilities and all the things the life you live in the secret that shows actually if God were to take anybody to heaven on the basis of who you are by yourself you'll never make it by yourself you come to that God by Christ seen he ever live to make intercession for us the lord is praying for you tonight i said the lord is praying for you tonight that you will see yourself as god sees you that you'll see yourself as christ sees you that you will know that in your own strength in your own power in your own ability you cannot you can never save yourself but who have a god who is able a God who is more than enough, a God who created us originally, He will recreate you tonight. Life will come into you, eternal life will come to you, salvation will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. He ever lived to make intercession for them. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, for such an high priest became us such an high priest became us no other priest on earth in any assembly in any church in any denomination is comparable to him for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless on the files separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens that's our savior that's our lord and everyone that comes to him he will forgive he will set you free he will turn your life around he'll make a heavenly change in your life in jesus name i said he'll make change heavenly change in your life in jesus name is able able to save is able able to heal give me a good amen. amen what men have not been able to do the sicknesses men have not been able to take away the diseases men have not been able to heal tonight is possible god comes to you in his power he will heal you. Those who are bound, those who are afflicted, with powers of darkness, powers of evil, powers of demons, tonight, as you open up, and you tell the Lord, I'm not able to do this. Others, men, are not able to do this for me, but I know, because you are God, I know, you will do this in my life tonight. We'll do it in your life. It'll break every yoke. It'll destroy the works of the devil. He will set you free. What you have not been able to find a natural cure for, a supernatural cure will come in your life. In Job chapter 42, Reading from verse 2, Job chapter 42, verse 2, it says, I know 
that thou canst do everything. This is the chapter that brought healing, deliverance to Job. Also, the other chapters, they have been arguing back and forth. What have you done? What have you not done? Are you perfect? Are you able? Are you good? Are you, go are you not good enough? But now, when Job came to the realization and said, It's not about me. It's not about my friends. It's not about my counselors. It's not about anyone around me able to help. They are not able to help. Every one of them became a disappointment unto him. But then he now came to the realization, I am not able. My friends are not able. The priests are not able. The traditionalists are not able. The powers that be are not able. But we have a God who is more than able. I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee it was at that time healing came and when you come to the realization that god is god el shaddai the almighty the ancient of days the powerful one the omnipotent one who is more than able at that point your deliverance will come at that point your healing will come look at verse 10 it says in verse 10 and the lord turned the captivity of job the lord turned when he accepted with me this is impossible with men this is impossible and with all the others around pretending helpers this is impossible but i know that god can do everything and no thought can be withheld from him at that time the lord turned the captivity of job when will he turn your captivity when will he heal your sick body what man cannot do to open the eyes of the blind to make the lame to rise up and walk to transform your life and supply every deficiency in your life what man cannot do tonight 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 the lord will do it because we serve a god we come to a god we believe in God who is more than enough. Point number three now. In point number three, we have His gracious mercy, His gracious compassion, His great, it's a gracious love that stretches beyond enough. It stretches beyond enough that anywhere you are, everywhere you are, the mercy of the Lord tonight to forgive. The mercy of the Lord tonight to set you free. The mercy of the Lord tonight to do in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, to do what man cannot do. That gracious mercy of the Lord will stretch beyond enough in your life in jesus name tonight is your night of total freedom tonight is your night of total freedom from bad character bad behavior deficiencies in your lifestyle and the things you do in secret that shows that you are not victorious over the temptations and the attacks coming from the devil tonight the lord will wipe everything away free from sin free from sin free from sickness free from satanic affliction tonight is my night i said tonight is my night 
you will praise the Lord tonight. You will glorify the name of the Lord tonight. Look at Psalm 103 from verse 1. Psalm 103, we're looking at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Why? Because He is merciful. Because His mercy, His grace, His love stretches beyond in all. Bless the Lord, O my soul. When you can tell your soul to concentrate on the Lord, the Lord that is able, the Lord that is more than able, the Lord that can do in your life what man or woman cannot do, and what you cannot do for yourself, and you call your soul to trust in the Lord, to depend on the Lord, to have confidence in the Lord, and to bless the Lord because you know what men cannot do, he will do it for you tonight. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. He said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, benefits that man cannot offer. Benefits that you cannot generate by yourself in human strength. Benefits that all the good works you have done, you think you have done, cannot produce in your life. Benefits coming from God. Benefits coming from Christ. Benefits coming from the throne of God. It says, these are the benefits. Look at verse 3. It says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities how many iniquities tell me tell me you know there are people they actually don't understand that God forgives all iniquities let's say somebody comes to you and he says I'm sorry I offended you please forgive me then you say I forgive from the dead and the bottom of my heart I forgive you and a fellow says thank you and then he goes some distance he comes back again and he says I'm sorry please forgive me you say what's wrong with you didn't you hear that I said from the bottom of my heart I forgive you and then you come again all right I forgive you take that forgiveness no I don't have anything against you he walks some distance and he comes back again and he says please please forgive me is that the right attitude tell me isn't that what we do in religion we come to god god please forgive me and then he has grace and mercy and he forgives you then you walk some distance you come back again please forgive me i told you before i forgive you oh thank you lord then you go and you walk some distance again and you come back again please forgive me such people take forgiveness as religion and they must say that every time when all sins all trespasses all iniquities are forgiven they are forgiven and we don't have to come every time and every time he forgives and he sets you free tonight that freedom that forgiveness will come and you'll not have to be saying those empty words anymore in jesus name who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth how many diseases tell me tell me who healeth 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 who healeth all thy diseases tonight 
every disease in your body because the Lord is able and because the Lord cannot fail and even though this is impossible with man with God it is possible it will heal you totally tonight look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him you honor the lord you know you cannot save yourself and you come to the lord in the understanding that the forgiveness you cannot offer yourself and the salvation you cannot give yourself that god will give and as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy toward them that fear him you have that mercy on you today mercy as wide as an ocean as deep as an ocean as high as the sky the mercy that stretches beyond enough tonight is your night look at verse 12 as far as the east is from the west look at your right and see the horizon very far and look at your ledge and look at the horizon very far the east very far from the west as far as the east is from the west so far as he removed our transgressions from us he will remove all your transgression all your sin all your iniquity that as you cannot see what is far away in the eastern horizon those sins will not be visible anymore he will put them in the depths of the sea they'll never be remembered against you anymore verse 13 in verse 13 like as a father pities his children so the lord pities them that fear him the mercy of the lord is coming to you tonight the grace of the lord is coming to you tonight the sympathy of the lord the comfort of the lord that brings conversion that brings healing that brings deliverance is coming to you tonight whosoever will call on the name of the lord will be saved once you realize i cannot save myself my good works are not good enough my kindness not kind enough my righteousness not righteous enough only christ because he died on the cross of calvary can save me you come with that understanding salvation will come are you ready i said everyone is ready are you ready almighty god is ready for you are you ready for him let's bow and eyes closed you are thinking you are good but now you see you're not good enough you are thinking you are all right i'm okay now you know you are not all right you are not okay enough you cannot save yourself Christianity cannot save you religion cannot save you Every good thing you have tried to do in the past till today cannot save you. Your membership in any church cannot save you. Your position in any church cannot save you. Christ and Christ alone must save. You want that eternal life? You want that salvation? You are not depending on your good works. You are not depending on your self-righteousness. 
you say I need Christ's own salvation forgiveness and freedom and I want my name reaching in the book of life wherever you are just raise up your hand you come with the understanding he he alone can say raise up your hand wherever you are you are saying Lord now I understand I cannot save myself Defic there are deficiencies in the best I can do in life but I come for your salvation if you are raising up your hand please stand up God bless you wherever you are you've come to the realization I cannot save myself my righteousness my goodness my kind works my membership of the church cannot save me Christ 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 the Savior alone can save me raise up your hand and stand up this is a serious moment for you so that you'll enter into life eternal great moment for salvation for your forgiveness for your freedom for your new life heavenly life in christ as we're standing up tell the lord and say lord nothing in my hands I bring all the offering all the sacrifices all the money I have given all the good things I try to do I now realize they cannot save me tell the Lord I trust you I believe in you I lean my whole weight on you that you are my savior and you are Lord and I transfer all my sins all my iniquities I transfer everything to Christ forgive me Lord thank you thank you Lord Thank you, Lord, because your gracious mercy stretches beyond enough. I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. On the merit of the mercy of Christ, I am saved. On the merit of the compassion of Christ, my Savior, I am saved. Amen. Amen. Keep on standing and praying with you now, Father. We we'll thank you for making your word clear to everyone that it's not the works of our hand, it's not our marriage. It is not any good thing we have done, but it is what Christ did on the cross of Calvary, that he bore our sins and has taken all our sins away. Lord, I pray for everyone putting their trust and their faith in Christ tonight. Save them, forgive them, set them free from their sins in jesus name from now on what they couldn't achieve and do by themselves i pray that your grace will come into every life that they'll go from here and live 
in the grace of God, in the righteousness from heaven, in Jesus' name. Lord, grant everyone assurance of their forgiveness, assurance of their salvation, new strength, new power, new life, new nature. Grant you everyone to go and sin no more in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has answered my prayer. I am saved. I am saved. Keep on standing. I say to us here, welcome now and direct us this time of counseling. Somebody shout, miracle time. Come in your way. Remember, this is impossible with men. But with God, but with God, but with God, He will open blind eyes tonight. Make the lame to walk tonight. He will do the incredible, the impossible in every life tonight in Jesus' name. With God, with God. In your life, healing your sickness, delivering you from oppression, setting the captive free, your time has come. You raise up your hand for your miracle, touch the place where you have the challenge, and then after the final amen, you'll open your eyes and check up, you'll find God has made all things possible in your life. Raise up that hand. Expect the miracle. Put your attention on God. With God, all things are possible. Father, we come to you tonight with implicit faith, unshakable faith, unwavering faith, Knowing that with you, all things are possible. We come for those possibilities of unshakable faith tonight. And we're asking, O oh Lord, perform your miracle in every life. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Deliver the oppressed. Yeah. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. Lord, I pray that what men could not do and what men cannot do, that at this very moment now, over here on these grounds, over the radio, over the television, and in every locality, everywhere, all over the world, what men could not have done, do it now in Jesus' name. Let the incurable be cured right now. Issue of blood dry up in Jesus' name. Cancer be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis. You are healed in Jesus' name. Every yoke, every affliction be taken away from your life and from your body at this moment in Jesus' name. Healing everywhere now. Deliverance everywhere now. Miracle everywhere now. Lord, confirm it in everyone. Testimony in every mouth. 
In Jesus' name we pray.